ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله اما بعد يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارham ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان احسن الكلام كلام الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل دلاله في النار indeed all praises due to allah we praise him we seek his aid his assistance and his forgiveness we seek refuge with allah from the evils of our souls and from the evils of our actions we believe as muslims that whomsoever allah guides there is none to misguide and whomsoever allah chooses to misguide due to a perversion or a disease in the hearts there is none to guide I bear witness that there is nothing which has a right to be worshipped except Allah alone without any partners and I bear witness that Muhammad bin Abdullah alayhi salatu wassalam is his slave and his final messenger indeed the best speech is the speech of Allah the best of guidance and examples is the guidance and example of the noble messenger Muhammad alayhi salatu wassalam and that the worst of all affairs are the newly invented matters which are introduced into the religion for which there is no proof from the book and the sunnah and no from the gathering of the companions of Allah's messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam then they are the worst of all affairs introduced into the religion for every newly invented matter is an accursed innovation every accursed innovation misguidance and every misguidance is in the hellfire ibn qayyim rahimullah ta'ala the great imam of ahlus sunnah wal jama'a from the students of shaykh al islam ibn taymiyah rahimullah ta'ala who passed away over 7 centuries ago in the year 752 after the hijra he is known as a great imam of the sunnah a clarifier of the truth the one who in the path of his teacher shaykh al islam ibn taymiyah clarified for the people the true belief in the asma wa sifat of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and called to the following of the messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam in truth and in that regard He is counted as one of the great illuminaries of the people of Sunnah and the people of the Jama'a who adhere to the way of the companions of Allah's Messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam. In addition to this, he is known as an individual who used to rebuke the people of bid'ah, the people of innovations and the people of misguidance, and he was stern against them. And at the same time, he was one of those individuals who could open up the hearts of the people by bringing them and by showing them the light of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so he used to bring those narrations and those passages by way of introducing the people to the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and showing them the way of purifying one's soul and purifying one's actions so in this regard he has an excellent discussion upon the conditions of the heart and what the heart is and from those matters that he mentions ibn qayyim rahimahullah He mentions that the heart is of three types. He mentions that the heart is of three types. The heart that is healthy, the heart that is dead, and the heart that is sick. And then he defines each one of these hearts and how an individual avoids becoming of those individuals whose heart begins to die. And likewise he discusses the heart that is healthy and how to put health into the heart. by attaching it to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then he mentions the heart that is sick a sick heart 
a heart that has a combination of a portion which is dying or a portion that is influenced by the shaitan and a portion that is guided and directed by the nasus of the book and the sunnah, by the text of the book and the sunnah. So with regard to the heart that is healthy, there is an ayah of the Qur'an where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has stated, يَوْمَ لَا يَنْفَعُ مَالٌ وَلَا بَنُونَ إِلَّا مَنْ أَتَاءَ اللَّهَ بِقَلْبٍ سَلِيمٌ Where Allah Azza wa Jal mentions the day on which neither the wealth nor the children nor the sons will be of any use except for the one who comes to Allah with a heart that is sound. So this is the individual who recognizes this ayah and reads this ayah and ponders upon this ayah that he realizes that the one who comes to Allah with a heart that is healthy and he recognizes whilst he's upon the earth that his children and his wealth and all of that which he gathers by way of striving for status or striving for the dunya or striving for wealth or striving for increase in provisions and he just devotes his life just to this matter and he concerns himself not with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then he should read this ayah and ponder upon this ayah. The day on which, which day? Yawmul Qiyamah. The day on which we will all stand before Allah Azza wa Jal and we will stand before Him in nothing to sow except for our deeds, except for the deeds that we bring before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So on a day, neither your wealth nor your children are going to benefit you. It is the Yawm al Qiyamah where Allah will judge the one who comes to him with the heart that is sound, with the heart that is healthy. So in defining the healthy heart, therefore, it is a heart that is pure. It is a heart that is cleansed from desires of the earth and the dunya. It is a heart that strives towards the sunnah. It is a heart that, that runs away and flees from innovations and bid'ah and desires. It is a heart that when it sees evil, it turns its face away from it. It is a heart that tries to purify itself from anything that may come to corrupt it. It is a heart that gives for the sake of Allah and takes for the sake of Allah. It is a heart that has hub and bugd for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is a heart that loves for the sake of Allah and hates for the sake of Allah. Not for the sake of any tribal allegiances, nor for the sake of his biya or partisanship, nor for the sake, because you come from a certain part of the earth, because you are a person who comes from India, or Pakistan, or Scotland, or America, or Morocco, or Somalia. It is not a heart that makes division, or love and hate, and giving and taking based upon these types of matters. But rather it is a heart that gives for Allah, and takes for Allah, loves for Allah, and hates for Allah and tries to perfect Iman as the hadith of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam indicates in that regard, with regard to Iman. It is a heart that devotes his worship for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is a heart that becomes awakened in the last third of the night and stands before Allah, asking Allah to forgive it and forgive the body and that which the body has done and that which the tongue has stated and that which the, which the heart has felt by way of hasad and jealousy, and envy, and su'udhan, having evil suspicions, it cleanses itself for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So a servant with a healthy heart, with a heart that is sound, with a heart that is purified, a heart that is cleansed, is a heart that dedicates his journey towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it does not base his actions on any individual, apart from the statements of Allah, and that which the Messenger of Allah alayhi salatu was was upon. And this heart must not give any of its precedence to any other faith, any other creed, any other iman, any other aqeedah, over and above that which Allah and His Messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam have sent down, or Allah has sent down upon the tongue of His Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. So Allah has mentioned in this regard, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu, la tuqaddimu bayna yaday Allahi wa rasulihi, وَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ إِنَّ اللَّهَ سَمِيعٌ عَلِيمٌ That Allah has stated in this ayah, O oh, you who believe, O oh, you who have iman, do not put yourselves before Allah and His Messenger 
But fear Allah, have taqwa of Allah. For indeed, Allah is the all hearing, the all knowing. So this is the heart that does not proceed over and above the speech of Allah, over and above the commands and the direction and the guidance of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa It is the heart that rectifies itself continuously and questions itself continuously and accounts for itself continuously. This is the heart that every single believer, every single Muslim, and more so every single individual who adheres to the manaj and the aqeedah of the Salafu Salih that he strives towards. That he purifies himself and he corrects himself and he guides by the book of Allah and guides by the sunnah of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And in opposition to this type of heart which is healthy and pure and clean, a heart that guides itself by the book and the sunnah is the heart which is opposite to this. This is the heart which is dead. A heart that has died a death. This is the heart that does not worship Allah. This is a heart that is full of desires, of hawa and whims. This is the heart that falls into transgression and sin. It is a heart that follows that which the, that which the shaitan throws into it. It has no concern for the book of Allah. It has no concern for the sunnah of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa Rather, the possessor of this heart walks upon the earth. Walks upon the earth like an animal or worse than an animal. Because it has no guidance. It has nothing to restrict it. Nor does it allow anything to restrict it. It is a heart that is hasty. It is a heart that runs towards being towards its desires and rushes towards them. It is a heart that does not, does not call itself to account. Nor does it look towards its Lord. But rather any shaitan that comes to it, it races towards it. Any desire that approaches it, it falls into that desire. This is the heart that is dead. This is the heart that has died due to its running away from that which Allah has commanded. So it is a heart that is drunk with its own fancies. And it has a love and a haste towards the fleeting desires of the earth and towards the fleeting desires of the dunya. It, when it is called to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the ahirah and the akhirah, and it is called to it from a distance, it does not respond to any nasiha, nor does it respond to any advice. Rather, it follows every schema and diseased individual that comes to it. Any shaitan, any devil that calls to it, it runs towards it. This is the heart that when the life is mentioned to it, when life is mentioned to it by way of the book and the sunnah, that heart becomes angry. Passion drives it. And it becomes deaf, dumb and blind to everything except that which is evil. This is the heart that is dead. And to associate with an individual who possesses such a heart is not permissible. Rather, the owner of such a heart, he himself has tempted evil. So therefore the one who accompanies him will be tarnished by that evil likewise. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ordered us, and the Messenger of Allah alayhi salatu wasalam has ordered us to keep away from the possessors of such a heart, a heart that is dead, a heart that does not worship Allah, nor does it fear Allah, rather it is consumed by sins and desires. So we keep away from such a heart, as we mentioned a few khutbahs ago, about the ten levels or the ten steps towards earning the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One of those levels was keeping company with the righteous and keeping away from the ones who are sinful. So likewise, we keep away from those who are sinful. For indeed, it has been narrated that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam has informed us that the person is upon the religion of his companion and you will be with the ones whom you love. Rather, look not towards a person, but look towards his companions. For every individual is upon the religion of his companion. So if your companion is evil, and he is a backbiter, and he is a slanderer, and he is a person who has su'udhan towards the Salafiyin, and he plots and he plans and he divides the Salafis, then likewise some of that will rub off upon you. So be careful about keeping companionship with such people. Be careful about giving your heart and opening your heart to such types of individuals. So an individual who has a heart that is healthy, he keeps with the healthy people. Those whose hearts are sound and pure. And the one whose heart is dead, then by necessity, 
He will keep company with those people whose hearts are dead. As the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has mentioned, that indeed the souls are like gathered armies. Indeed the souls are like gathered armies. So we know that the soul that is a righteous soul will find the righteous soul. The soul that is an evil soul will seek out the evil soul. As some of the Salaf from amongst them, Ibn Hajar, Al-Asqalani rahimahullah ta'ala has mentioned with regard to this matter, as of many of the other Salaf, that this hadith and the meaning of this hadith is so severe and so, so powerful, so much so that it is like a person who comes in into a room with a soul that is sound and a good soul. And the room is filled with a hundred people who are hypocrites, who have evil souls and evil tendencies, but amongst them there is one righteous soul. Then that righteous individual will be guided to the righteous one from amongst the hundred who are sinful. And likewise, if an individual who is an evil soul and is an evil individual, he may come into a room with a hundred people in that room or in that gathering, and a hundred people who are righteous and truthful with clean, sincere souls. He may come into that room and maybe from amongst them there is only one who is a munafiq. His soul be attracted to the munafiq or to the soul who is an evil characteristic with it. So make our souls cleansed and pure by having the heart that is healthy. So when Ibn Qayyim continues by mentioning the third type of the heart or the third type of heart and this is the heart that is between the two. Between the healthy and between the sick. This is the heart, or between the healthy and the dead. This is the heart that is the sick heart. The heart that has marad. It is a heart that has illness in it. It is a heart that at times it is guided by the book and the sunnah. And at other times it is guided by the shaitan and by the desires and by the whims. So sometimes... The heart that is healthy dominates. So when the heart that is healthy dominates, and that person shows the goodness in his character, and the goodness in his worship, and the goodness in his behavior. And sometimes when the evil part of the heart, the heart, the part of the heart that is sick, and the shaitan has thrown his whisperings at, sometimes that part of the heart dominates. So when that part of the heart dominates, then that person becomes affected, and then the evil in his character comes out. And the evil of his worship and the evil in his behavior becomes known. So when this type of heart comes about, then it is upon us to recognize when that comes about. Not like some of the people do. When they become weak in their religion and they become sinful. So instead of looking at themselves and saying that indeed I have sinned or indeed I have fallen short or indeed I have lied or indeed I have deceived. Instead of looking towards their own actions, they start looking towards the Salafis and the Salafiyun. And they say that the Dawa Salafiyya is shadida. It has too much shidda, it is too harsh. You're too strict, you're too firm, you're too adherent to the Sunnah. So instead of looking internally at themselves and looking towards that which is correct, and that is that I have heard, I have sinned, I have fallen short. So it is upon me now to look into myself. And correct my behavior. So because they don't want to look introspectively into themselves. And look towards their own weaknesses. They start blaming the Salafiyun. And the people of Sunnah and the people of the Jama'ah. So it is upon those people to recognize that their heart is sick. Their heart is sick. So it is upon them to purify that heart. And not to look towards the Dawah to Salafiyah and look for weaknesses in it. Rather the weakness is in the individual not in the Dawah. The weakness is in the individual, not in the da'wah. So this type of heart that is sick, sometimes dominated by that which is good in it, sometimes dominated by that which is evil in it. This is the heart, as Ibn Qayyim and some of the other scholars have mentioned, this is the heart that confuses, sometimes even between sunnah and bid'ah. Sometimes this heart confuses between sunnah and bid'ah. And this heart will confuse between that which is a sin and that which is righteous. So he can't make the tamiz, he can't distinguish between good and evil. It's a heart that becomes confused because sometimes it's dominated by the shaitan, dominated by its sins, dominated by its desires, and sometimes it is dominated by the good that it contains. So it's a heart that is confused. It's a heart that is in folder. 
So this individual who has this type of heart must recognize when he has this heart. Because once he recognizes it, he has left denial. Because the, one of the biggest diseases amongst the people is that they live in a state of denial. That they have got a sick heart. But they don't recognize that their heart is sick. So since they don't recognize that their heart is sick, they don't know how to cure it. Because they don't look for the cure. So when an individual recognizes the heart is sick, it has some good in it. But it has some evil in it also. So let's look for the good in it and establish that and remove the sickness from it. Remove the hasad. Remove the hub of the whore. The desire for leadership. The desire for status. The desire for wealth. And let's strive towards removing those parts of the heart. The lying, the cheating, the deceiving, the bid'ah, the innovations, the desires. All of this to remove it. Cleanse it from that. And then put it and make it and establish it. And build the part of the heart that is clean and healthy. والحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم ابن قيم رحمه الله تعالى ذيفو has mentioned that the heart is of three types. And we've briefly explained each type of heart. The first heart that is alive. It has, submit, it has submitted to Allah. It is humble. It is sensitive. It is aware. The second type of heart, it is brittle. It is dead. Of no use, not to itself, nor to anybody else. Except that it calls to the hellfire. The third wavers between either its safety or its destruction. Either between its safety or its destruction. So let us recognize which type of heart that we have. And most of us and most of the people have some weakness in their hearts. Have a sickness in their hearts or a part of sickness. Just degrees of what type of sickness it is and how big the sins are. Or how, whether they are minor sins, major, major sins. Whether it is something by way of hasad or jealousies or desire. But either way, whichever way it is, to recognize it and to remove it. And by doing so, by doing so, a person strives towards the, ibad, the, the ibadah of Allah. Jalla wa az. When he strives towards the ibadah of Allah, then the fruits of ibadah will be known. And the fruits of the, cure, the pure cleansed heart will be known. And from the fruits of the pure cleansed heart, and from the fruits of ibadah, is taqwa. Is taqwa. So a person has to establish the ibadah of Allah. And ibadah is a comprehensive term that is defined from those things and those actions that Allah loves and approves of. And to keep away from those matters which Allah hates and has forbidden and he detests and he dislikes. Whether they are actions of the heart, whether it is speech upon the tongue, or whether it is actions of the limbs. All of this encompasses the definition of ibadah. That a person does that which Allah has obligated. That a person does that which Allah has obligated, made obligatory upon you. And to do that which he loves. To keep away from that which he has forbidden. And that which he hates. Whether it be from the internal actions, or the internal matters, or from the external matters. So taqwa is related to this ibadah. How is it related to this ibadah? The taqwa is related to the ibadah because by doing this ibadah of Allah, by doing these actions and these matters of ibadah, this all-encompassing matter of ibadah, then the fruit of it is taqwa. The fruit of it is taqwa. As Allah has stated in the Quran, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu, kutiba, kutiba alaykum usayyam, kama kutiba ala ladhina min qablikum, la'allakum tattaqoon. That Allah has stated in this ayah, O you who believe, fasting has been obligated upon you, just as it was obligated or prescribed upon those who came before you, so that you may become from the muttaqoon, so you may become people of taqwa, people of piety, people who have earned that which they deserve due to their actions. So Allah mentions this ayah what? Allah mentions first and foremost, that, O oh, you who believe, Allah has obligated upon you the fasting. Fasting 
is an external action that an individual does. An external action that an individual does. The fruit of this external action is what? That Allah makes you from the people who have taqwa. From the people who have, righteous, have righteousness. And from the people who have piety. So this ayah, along with many other ayat of the Quran, Allah has shown us that taqwa is attained from correct ibadah. And as for the meaning of taqwa, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned with regard, to the, with regard to how to achieve this taqwa and what this taqwa is. That taqwa is achieved by ibadah. And taqwa means, as some of the salaf used to say, like Talqi bin Habib and others, it means to do those actions and those deeds in the obedience to Allah, expecting the reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And taqwa is to keep away from that which Allah has forbidden, out of fear of earning the anger or the punishment of Allah. So taqwa is to purify oneself and purify the heart and purify the soul. So that he does those actions of worship. As Allah has mentioned in the Quran, He's mentioned, وَالشَّمْسِ وَالْدُحَاهَا وَالْقَمَرِ إِذَا تَلَاهَا وَالنَّهَارِ إِذَا جَلَّاهَا وَاللَّيْلِ إِذَا يَغْشَاهَا وَالسَّمَاءِ وَمَا بَنَاهَا وَالْعَرْضِ وَمَا تَحَاهَا وَالنَّفْسِ وَمَا سَوَّاهَا فَأَلْحَمَهَا فَجُورَهَا وَتَقْوَاهَا قَدْ أَفْلَحَ مَنْ زَكَّاهَا وَقَدْ خَابَ مَنْ دَسَّاهَا Where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned in this, in this surah, at the beginning of this surah, Allah has mentioned, and pay attention, because this is a point that is important, and a benefit, an excellent benefit that can be taken from this ayah, or from this surah, and many other surah that are similar to this. Where Allah begins this ayah, by this surah by mentioning, by the sun and its brightness, by the moon as it follows, as it follows it, by the day as it shows, it shows its brightness, by the night as it conceals it, by the heavens and its, fun, and its wondrous make, by the earth and all of its expanse, and by the soul and he who perfected it in its proportion, then he showed it what is right for it, and what is wrong for it and that which is right for it. Indeed, he who succeeds, who purifies it, and he who fails, who corrupts it. So Allah begins this surah by taking no less than seven oaths. No less than seven oaths. And know then when Allah takes seven oaths before mentioning a matter, that indeed the matter that is going to come after it is going to be something that is important. And therefore, Allah is preparing you by mentioning all of these oaths seven times or seven different oaths that know that that which is going to come after, pay attention. Pay attention to that which is going to come after. And what comes after the seven oaths? That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the issue of taqwa. And Allah mentions the issue of purifying the soul. And Allah mentions the issue of the corruption of the soul. He who succeeds, who purifies it. And he who fails is the one who corrupts it. So beware and note that indeed the purification of the soul and by purifying it and by keeping away from that which corrupts it is something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has paid great importance. So Allah bears witness to the fact that whatever follows this oath is very important. Therefore we should pay close attention to that which is being said to cleanse one's heart, to cleanse the heart to purify the soul. As Allah is the guardian and the protector of the soul, we should do every deed hoping for Allah's mercy and do every deed fearing his punishment and having full reliance upon him. So purifying the souls is something which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has set as a means for attaining taqwa. And this is what the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa was from the matters that he came down with. And this is done, again referring to the khutbah that we gave two weeks ago, Referring back to what? Two matters. For every single action, every single deed. Firstly, that the act and the deed, the statement, the belief, the action of the heart, or the action of the limb, or the speech upon the tongue, that it is done with two things in mind. First of all, we ask ourselves, 
Why am I doing this action? Why am I doing this action? So this will correct one's ikhlas. So a person must be sincere, making the attention, intention purely for Allah. And secondly, that we pay attention to how we do the deed. Is it in accordance to the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa So we make sure that the deed is accomplished by ittiba. By doing it in accordance to the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa So there is no riya, no showing off. And it is not for anybody else. It is for the sake of Allah. And secondly, that it contains no bid'ah, no mukhalif to the sunnah at all whatsoever. And when these two matters are fulfilled, then know that the action is accepted. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who will judge the believers on Yawm Al-Qiyamah with regard to their deeds. And may Allah make us from amongst those people who face Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with the clean heart and the qalbun salim. Wa subhanahu wa bihamdik, ashhadu an la ilaha illa ant, astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk. الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يحده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطيء الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أحسن الحديث كتاب الله وخير الحدي حدي محمد صلى الله عليه وآل آله وصحبه وسلم وشر الأمور مختفاتها وكل مختفات بدعة وكل بدعة دلالة وكل دلالة في النار وبعد Indeed all praise is due to Allah We seek his aid, his assistance and his forgiveness We seek refuge from, the, from Allah or We seek refuge with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala From the evils of our souls and from the evils of our actions As Muslims we believe that whomsoever Allah guides there is none to misguide. And whomsoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala misguides due to a perversion in the souls, then there is none to guide. I bear witness that there is nothing which has the right to be worshipped except Allah alone without any partners. And I bear witness that Muhammad bin Abdullah alayhi salatu was salam is his slave and his final messenger. Then with regard to the fundamentals of knowledge that the Muslims May Allah correct them and correct us, ajma'een, that they have neglected the importance of a certain matter or certain matters. And these matters are those matters which make an action acceptable or they make an action rejected by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Rather, the matter has grown even worse than that. That we live in an age in which many of the Muslims from the Muslim Ummah of Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam that they assume that no matter what action that they do or how, the, how they do it and for whom they do it that all of this must surely be acceptable to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And such assumptions that rise from ignorance have played a destructive role 
with regard to the attaining the glory for the ummah or the nation of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So the nobility of the ummah and its true strength cannot be realized up until a person ponders upon these fundamentals or these two fundamentals that we are about to discuss today. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has stated in the Qur'an where he states, Say to them, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Shall we not tell you of those who have been lost with respect to their actions? Or those who will be most in lust with respect to their actions. Those who have wasted their efforts in this life. Whilst they thought that they were acquiring the good by their actions. So they are individuals who are the most lust with regard to their actions. Because they thought that they were acquiring good by doing those actions. But in reality... They are the ones who will have their actions rejected and they will find themselves to be the greatest in lust. So Ali radiallahu anhu, the fourth Khalifa of Al-Islam, the son-in-law of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and his cousin radiallahu anhu said that the people are of three classes or in three categories. The righteous scholar, or the student of knowledge who is upon the path of salvation and then the third category are the confused rubble who follow everyone that calls out bending along with every wind and they are not enlightened by the light of knowledge nor do they lean upon a firm support so the people are in three classes or in three categories either an individual is an alim of the deen a scholar who has studied and learnt and teaches others and preserves his, preserves his knowledge and acts upon it so he becomes closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Or an individual is a talibul ilm. He is a seeker of knowledge, a student of knowledge. Or he is from the ignorant rabble who follow everyone that calls out. Bending with every wind. And they are not enlightened by the light of knowledge, nor do they lean upon a firm support. Ibn Qayyim rahimahullah ta'ala mentioned in his Igathatul Luhfan a statement in which he said that the foundation of all khair, of all good, lies in knowledge and in justice. And the foundation of all sharr, of all evil, lies in jahl and dhulm. Lies in, oppression, lies in ignorance and in oppression. So it is important that every single Muslim, that he understands first and foremost, that it is not permissible for him to be an individual who speaks upon jahl or acts upon ignorance, but rather that he strives to be a talibul ilm, a person of knowledge, because all good lies in knowledge. And knowledge is the source of the establishment of justice. So it is important that there are two fundamentals that each and every single one of us should be aware of for our actions to be accepted. As Ibn Kathir, rahimahullah, mentions in his tafsir that the first of those matters is that the one under, undertaking that action must make it sincerely for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That he must turn his face sincerely to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his action to be accepted. And secondly, that the action must be in agreement to the sunnah of the messenger of Allah alayhi salatu wasalam. That he cannot oppose that which the messenger of Allah alayhi salatu wasalam came with. And it must be in accordance to the sharia that he brought down with him alayhi salatu wasalam. And if any one of these two conditions, as al hafidh ibn Kathir mentions, that if any one of these two conditions is missing, then the action it is rejected. It will neither be righteous, nor will it be accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As Allah has stated in his noble book, when he said, فَمَنْ كَانَ يَرْجُ لِقَاءَ رَبِّهِ فَلْيَعْمَلْ عَمِلًا صَالِحًا وَلَا يُشْرِكْ بِإِبَادَةِ رَبِّهِ أَهَدًا Where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has stated, in a clear ayah of the Qur'an, 
that whomsoever expects to meet his Lord, then let him work actions of righteousness in the worship of his Lord and associate no one as a partner with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we do actions because we expect the meeting with our Lord. And this is for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is the condition of making the action for Allah because we desire the meeting with our Lord. And we work righteous actions. And these righteous actions is not a righteous action up until it has been legislated by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or by the Messenger of Allah alayhi salatu was salam. So the noble ayah has commanded us that the action should be righteous, meaning that it should be in agreement with the sharia of Allah's Messenger alayhi salatu was salam. And it should be sincere because Allah has mentioned at the end of the ayah, وَلَا يُشْرِكْ بِإِبَادَةِ رَبِّهِ أَحَدًا and do not associate any partners with Allah in regard to that. So therefore the action must be done purely and sincerely for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And no one should be shared along with that action. As the great scholar, Saeed ibn Jubair, radiallahu anhu stated, that no word is acceptable except with action. No word is acceptable except with action. And no action is acceptable, except with words. And no word, no action are acceptable with the intention. And no word, action, no intention is acceptable, except if it conforms with the sunnah. So those matters which are internal and hidden, the intention, and those which are outwardly by word or action, that none of them are acceptable unless they are in accordance to the sunnah of Allah's Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. For the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said, that indeed Allah does not look at your faces, nor to your wealth, but rather He looks towards your heart and your actions. The hadith in Muslim and Ibn Majah. So this states that the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, has affirmed, that indeed Allah will scan your hearts, and Allah will look towards your actions, Though he is not concerned with the colors of your skins, nor the forms of your bodies, but indeed he is concerned with that which is in your hearts by way of your intentions and by way of your sincerity. And he is indeed concerned with your actions by way of that which you state upon your tongues and by that, by that which you perform upon your bodily limbs. This is what Allah is concerned with, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So contrary to what many of the people think, that sincerity alone is not sufficient for worshipping Allah, but along with that, it must be in conformity with the sunnah. Because the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa said, but he looks towards your, ha- towards your hearts and towards your actions. So it is not sufficient that a person just says that my heart is clean. But rather that must be followed up by righteous actions. And a righteous action is not acceptable unless it conforms with the sunnah. So the righteous action is not based upon personal tastes nor upon desires and nor upon perceptions, nor upon the intellect alone, nor other than that, but rather the criteria for judging whether an action is righteous or not righteous is based upon the book and the sunnah of Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam and that which his companions were upon. So as Imam al-Barbahari rahimullah ta'ala mentioned in his book Kitab Sharh al-Sunnah, he said, and no may Allah have mercy upon you, that the deen came from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That the deen that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent was not based upon the intellect and it was not left to the intellect, nor to the opinions of the men. And knowledge of it is with Allah and His Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa So do not follow anything based upon your desires and thereby deviate from the deen of Allah. Since Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa explained the sunnah to his ummah and made it clear to the companions and the companions are the jama'ah. And the jama'ah is the aswadul a'adham. It is the main body. And the, major, and, the, and the main body is the truth and its people. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has stated in the Quran, وَمَنْ عَدَّلُّ مِمَّنْ نِتَّبَعَ هَوَاهُ بِغَيْرِ الْهُدَى بِغَيْرِ هُدَى مِنَ اللَّهِ That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has stated, and, he, and who is more astray? 
or who is more misguided than the one who follows his own desires without guidance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So who is the one who is more astray than the one who follows his own desires? So we have been ordered not to follow our own desires and not to follow the hawa, but rather to follow guidance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah,